guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hello and welcome I am Taylor today I am talking about homeschool I don't talk about this like a whole lot like we share about it in like daily life videos and vlogs and stuff like that and I've done like our homeschool space like setup and videos but I've never like really sat down and talked about homeschool because honestly I am not an expert I feel like there are so many people out there um, on Facebook and on other websites and here on YouTube that just know a lot more about homeschool than I do but y'all have been asking me some questions and I keep getting the same questions over and over again so I ended up asking y'all for some more questions so that I could do like kind of like homeschool Q&A today first I'm going to show you guys our setup again because I've kind of rearranged it again and, and then I'm going to show you like what books I bought and things like curriculum that I purchased and then I'll sit back down and talk about why I picked that curriculum and the requirements for my state. It's going to vary by state and then I will answer all of the questions that I got on Instagram and YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the space behind me. So if you usually watch my videos, you know we don't have a whole lot of space. This is our kitchen slash dining room. This is like supposed to be the dining room half. This is our dining room table. We recently got these chairs. I had some wooden chairs on the homeschool table and then some red chairs that go with this table. But I got rid of them. None of them were comfortable. Got these super comfortable. Got Pioneer Woman cushions on them. I plan on getting two more of these for the homeschool table. I just didn't want to buy six and then not be comfortable enough for homeschooling. Um, but for now, we're just going to like move the chairs over there if we're sitting over there. But a lot of the time we do sit here together. So we've got this table, dining room table, this table, homeschool table. It's an Ikea table. And I've got all our books and stuff spread out right now. It's got a little Alex drawer on top. There's our laptop, which usually isn't covered up. But we haven't been doing a school right now, so it's just not in use right now. Um, we're actually going to be getting a new desktop computer in the living room and the old one is going to come in here and then we can move the laptop around when we need to. We've got our little calendar up here and yeah, it still says June because we are not doing school right now. Um, we've got stickers in here because I like stickers. We've got dry erase stuff, markers, and then these little quick stick paint sticks in here, colored pencils some things that they've made, um, Elijah's flashcards, then we've got markers and all of our pencils and scissors and glue and that thing. And then over here is where we keep, their binders are actually still here with our work from last year. I need to take those out. We've got clipboards for them to use. And then these are workbooks that we're still working through. They just like absolutely love doing workbooks. So they're allowed to come in here and just like do some workbook work if they want to. So we've got those, and then we've got like sticker books, and dry erase books, and like stencils and stuff. And then down here, this is like my record keeping stuff. So artwork and stuff that I want to save is in there. And then we've got paper and newspaper. And then on the very bottom is coloring books. And that used to not be here, but we needed more room. So we've got that now. And then this shelf, which is actually kind of a mess. The top is all board games. Some of them are like learning games, like this addiction and subtraction game, some swap. Some swamp is one of their favorites. This one is actually a vintage game. It's like for math, but cannot find it online anywhere. It's called Cover Up and really Lily really likes that one. Our pop for sight words. So learning and just regular board games up there. And then over here we have like construction paper and stuff and then this mess that I need to get rid of is just any work that they've done like worksheets that they've ripped out and finished any pictures they've drawn so I really need to get rid of that before we start the school year so they have a place to put things but uh yeah that's a mess we've got some math manipulatives unifix cubes we've got tanagrams down there and pattern blocks down there and then a lot of books that we like to use for learning. Cat in the Hat Learning Library books. Some Usborne books. And then we've got puzzles. More little manipulatives like counting sticks and stuff. More puzzles. And some spelling. 
and that box is full of all different kinds of flashcards but yeah that is like our little space over here they have their little kitchen and grocery store and we've got more educational posters over there map of the world map of america counting colors the alphabet shapes monster manners all of these are pretty much from dollar tree except for the world map and map of america those were from target but i think i have them linked in my amazon store so that's our little space it's not a whole lot but it works so for curriculum we use easy peasy and i use easy peasy because it is basically free i don't have to worry about making lesson plans it's like set up kind of day by day when I was trying to pick a curriculum I was really overwhelmed with the choices and like trying to lesson plan and everything so I found easy peasy and I love that there's a large like helpful community of people on Facebook and they can help you with any questions and it's just like laid out and I can have I have a base to start with essentially and then I can add on top of that if we want to dig deeper into things or cover more things I feel like it's just a really good base so I have been doing it with both kids we started with Lily when she was right about four I think and we started with getting ready one which is not in this book getting ready one is basically just learning all the sounds of the letters and then at the end of getting ready one you have the McGuffey primer which is when you start with this learn to read book and that's when you start getting into sight words so this is what the sight words look like and then they learn those sight words and then they have to read the little page and I actually write all the sight words on index cards so that we can kind of go through them throughout the day and you do not have to buy this book but I preferred teaching my kids how to read from a physical book so I did buy this book it's fairly inexpensive I believe it's under ten dollars and so we use that for McGuffey primer Lily went through McGuffey primer with this and then she was on getting ready to which is more like the phonics and stuff which is in the back back here so we've got phonics so this book is essentially good for like two grades and then i'm using it with both kids lily is officially done with this book getting ready to is their kindergarten and so while she was doing getting ready to she was also doing math one because i felt like the math was too easy for her and getting ready to so she's done with this Elijah is now using this and he's actually doing both the McGuffey primer and getting ready to at the same time like sight words and phonics at the same time it's just working better for him that way so we've got that for him and then the only other thing that he really has is worksheets for handwriting and you can buy a handwriting book from them or you could just use your own handwriting sheets of paper or I just went ahead and printed the workbook pretty much so that's his stuff and then most of the math that he does is on the computer so uh, sometimes he'll have to write things down so I got them each a notebook so there is that and then Lily as I said now she is level one which is like first grade so I got her the first reader and then I think yeah this one I didn't actually need since I bought the reader Again, all of this can pretty much be done online and then you just have to print worksheets. They have the printables where you can buy the book of printable worksheets um, and then you don't have to worry about printing every day. But I just prefer to have more physical work so that's why I buy it and I like for them to have a book to actually read. So she's got the first reader, the first reader workbook and then for language arts she has the language arts printables. She'll be doing a lot of that like online but then she'll have her pages to work on in here and then math two because she already finished math one and last year i just printed the printables and this year i decided to just go ahead and buy the workbook because these are very inexpensive i think these are around like five dollars for these printable workbooks so that is what that looks like and then again I bought her a notebook just in case she needs to just like write anything down and then as I said I like them to have physical books to read so throughout the year 
it said like in the reading and language arts that these were some books that like things we were going to be reading from but it would be online i decided to purchase the physical books i got these from thrift books and abe books so paddle to the sea abroad by thomas crane and the first book of water so all of these are pretty older like stories i think this one's like poetry but yeah we, i just went ahead and ordered those not necessary and then these are some other little things that i purchased currently they're really into magnets so i got these little magnet sets i got some base 10 blocks because i thought that would help lily with the math they're going to be working on place place value and stuff like that so i thought that would help her and then i feel like i shared these at a dollar tree haul some little word wheels addition flashcards and subtraction flashcards to help her keep on top of her subtraction facts okay i kind of covered like all the reading and language arts and math that we're going to be doing a lot of the other subjects social studies science um, the bible study that we're going to be doing a lot of that is all on the computer some of them do have printables or workbooks and stuff but the specific theme that we picked did not they are going to be doing geography and earth science and we're actually doing that together as a family the way easy peasy is set up is you have your levels for each child like elijah is getting ready to lily is level one so they do their math and their reading and stuff on those levels independently and then you can kind of come together and do like a family school with your theme geography earth science the art the music we'll have pe in there but all that is kind of done together as a family and you adjust it based on their grade level so like lily will be able to write full sentences and elijah won't but he can still learn about mountains and the geography of the world and different things like that so you just kind of modify it even if i had like a fifth grader they have separate lengths to learn more for that like fifth grade level but lily and that child would still be learning geography together as a family kind of thing so that's part of the reason that i really like easy peasy it really i feel like sets me up for success uh because i am not a super great planner so things might change later we'll see how it goes so far right now i'm really loving easy peasy and the flexibility of it real quick i wanted to go over the requirements for my state i live in georgia requirements are different all over the place for homeschool i know some are less strict and some are like super strict mine is like kind of somewhere in the middle to me it doesn't seem as strict so technically according to the state this will be our first year homeschooling and that's just Lily because you don't have to submit your declaration of intent to homeschool until your child is six if they have never been in public school before. You don't have to do it until six. And kindergarten is not required in this state. So she's starting first grade at six. And we submitted our declaration of intent. And then the parent has to have a diploma or GED, which I have. And you must teach reading, language arts, math, social studies, and science. You must do 180 days of school with about four and a half hours of school per day, which it doesn't all have to be book work at school, like at public school, because you're not just sitting down doing book work all day. It's you learn in other ways, board games, you're practicing your math skills, that kind of thing. So don't think like four and a half hours. Oh, no. How am I going to get my kid to sit still for four and a half hours? You do not have to get your kid to sit still for four and a half hours. PE is part of school and that is like running around. And another requirement is standardized testing every three years beginning at the end of third grade. And you need to make a progress report at the end of the year. Okay, now I'm going to answer the questions from you guys. I am going to be reading them off my phone, so that's why I'm looking down. Question number one is what age did you start homeschooling with your kids? Somewhere around like three-ish, Lily was wanting to do worksheets and stuff. I didn't actually start easy peasy with her until she was about four. And Elijah, probably like three and a half is when we started easy peasy, like really working on the letter sounds and stuff. Next is, do I have any friends who homeschool? 
that would be so cool if my kids could interact. I do not unfortunately have any friends at that homeschool. I honestly don't really have that many friends in real life. Um, yeah, but the plan for this year was to join some homeschool groups and get out and make friends that have kids that homeschool. But um, right now that's a little difficult with COVID and everything. So we're, we're just doing the best we can right now. Next is favorite and least favorite thing about homeschool. Um, favorite would be seeing my kids learn new things and just like being so happy that they learn something. Just like seeing them light up because they finally get something just makes me so happy. And least favorite, maybe just like never getting a break from your kids. Next question is how do you give your kid a diploma when they complete 12th grade? Honestly, if I hadn't read this in a Facebook group, I would have no idea. You basically just make one. You are, as the parent, the principal, the superintendent, the whoever, like that is you. You just make a high school diploma. I'm, there's templates and stuff on the internet, so you just make one, fill it out, and then they have a high school diploma. Of course, if they're trying to go to college and stuff, you also will need to make a transcript so that like the college can see their grades and stuff, but yeah, it's pretty much that easy. Next question is, what does a homeschool day look like for you all? How do you plan a week out, etc.? So, easy peasy sets it up. My plan is to go in every Sunday and kind of write things down in my planner, print anything else that needs to be printed, um, look for other things to like go over things more, like if I want to expand on what easy peasy has on their website. Um, that's my plan. Things are going to be different this year. We're adding in a lot more for the Getting Ready 1, the Primer, and Getting Ready 2. It focuses heavily on reading and like counting and like a little bit of math. There is no social studies, science, um, it's th those things are just not in there. So we're adding a lot this year into our schedule. So I've kind of like written out a rough schedule, hoping that we can kind of stick to it. So I will go over that with y'all. Who knows how it will work. I don't have times on here. The plan is to wake up, eat breakfast. They can play while I make breakfast. After breakfast, get dressed. And then we will do one and a half to two hours of family schoolwork. That's gonna be our social studies, which is geography and cultures. Our science, which is earth science. And then our electives, so music, art, PE, and health. That's all going to be done together as a family. And then we'll have a break for lunch. I'm thinking like maybe about an hour. And then we'll do probably about two more hours of school, which is going to be their like independent work, the math, the reading, the language arts. Lily will also have computer and thinking one day a week. And that's it. Hoping we can stick to that. They'll have like play time for an hour after school. We'll have some quiet and reading time for like an hour. And I'm hoping this works out. I'm kind of like stressed and nervous about how much we're adding in. So for the first week going back to school, we are going to ease ourselves into it. We're gonna start with that like chunk of morning time before lunch, that family school. And we're gonna like work that into our schedule play with that for a couple days to a week and then add in our independent work after lunch and I'm hoping that works out so we'll see I'll let y'all know this is all still very new to me because I feel like the preschool and kindergarten stuff is just so much easier than like first grade and on next question is how do you know what to teach them is there goals that have to be met and how long is my school day um, I, I think it varies by state about how strict they are about what you teach per year. The state of Georgia is not super strict. I know in middle school you do have to teach Georgia history, but other than that, it's not like super strict. The standards for grade levels are pretty general, like pretty much even across like the United States. So... I'm just going with easy peasy and I do have to make sure I teach the five core subjects. That's, that's all I really have to do. 
Next question is, what's the hardest part of homeschooling? And I definitely think the hardest part of homeschooling is getting your kids to actually like pay attention and want to do the work. Like some days are just really hard. Like they don't have any patience and I don't have any patience. And sometimes we just have to give up for the day. At least we have hoping this year will be better. We just have to see how it goes. Next question is, if your kids wanted to go to public school, would you let them? No. I am the mom. We get to decide if our kids go to public school or not. If they wanted to do anything else that you didn't want them to do, would you let them? Probably not. Like, kids don't know what's best for them. Um, if they asked me when they were in high school to go to school, we'd probably have to have, like, a, a discussion about it. Lily said at four that she wanted to go to school with other kids. And we had a discussion about why she thought she wanted to go to public school. And it's because she wanted to see kids. She wanted to play with kids. And I'm like, I had to explain to her, like, when you go to school, you don't just get to play with the kids. You have to sit in a desk. You have to listen to a teacher. You have to do work. You have to be gone from home for, like, eight hours a day. And yes, there are other kids in the room, but you don't always get to talk to them. You don't always get to play. That might be a little bit of the day, but it's a lot of work too and she was like oh that doesn't sound like fun I was like what if we like went to the library and did story time more you get to see kids there what if we did got you in gymnastics or something you get to see kids there wouldn't that be better you get to stay at home do school for less time be at home with mommy you don't have to sit at a desk all day and listen to a teacher doesn't that sound like more fun and she agreed that getting up early and going to school and sitting at school was was not the choice that she wanted to make and so I didn't really give her the choice but I like kind of helped lead her back to homeschool so I feel like you you might just have to do that like kids don't get to just decide what is best for them that's how we feel Next question is, what advice would I give to a mom considering it? Um, believe in yourself. You can do it. Anybody can homeschool their kids. There is so much out there on the internet to help you. So just believe that you can do it. Don't doubt yourself. And don't listen to anyone that doubts you. Next question is, what was my biggest struggle? My biggest struggle would probably be having patience. Sometimes I just don't have a lot of patience with them. Y'all always say that I'm super patient, but I am definitely not super patient. Next question is, what is the best way to get your kids to focus and listen? And honestly, I don't really know. Um, I take things away. I say, if you don't do your school, if you don't sit down and focus and listen, if I have to tell you again to sit down and focus and listen, you're not going to get to play Minecraft today. You're not going to go get to watch YouTube kids on your phone. You're not going to get to do this. And usually that works. Is that the right thing to do? I, I don't I don't know, but that's, that's what usually works. Next question is, well, what are my kids' favorite things to learn about? Elijah really likes bugs. He likes to learn about bugs. Lately, they've been super into magnets and how they work and stuff. So that's why I bought this magnet movers. They've really, really been into that. Um, they just really always want to learn about anything. They're always asking me why. And if I tell them I don't know, they're like, well, look it up on your phone. Like they want instant answers. They just want to learn about everything really. Next question was, how do I feel about their social development while being cold? And I feel like homeschool parents get questions a lot about, like, how do you socialize your kids? Well, public school isn't for socialization. Like, it's for learning. Like, yes, they get to interact with kids sometimes, but that's not what school is there for. There are plenty of other ways to socialize your kids, be it playdates, the park, story time at the library, extracurricular activities. So no, I'm not really worried about it, or at least I wasn't before COVID. But with COVID right now, I'm slightly worried about it. We don't have anywhere to go, anything to do right now. So that's the only reason I'm worried about it right now. We used to do stuff all the time, but right now we can't really do stuff all the time. So not worried about their social development at all. They are super friendly, super like, 
social, like they love talking to people, we go to the park and they just instantly make friends. They are better than me, like, at being social. I'm not worried about them at all. Next question is, what program do you use and how do you manage not to stress about it? I use Easy Peasy, as I've said, and I just, I'm not a person who gets stressed easily. easily. I do get overwhelmed, which is why I picked Easy Peasy, because I felt like it wasn't super overwhelming. It's kind of all laid out for you, and I guess Easy Peasy helps me stay not stressed. Next question is, how many hours of schooling do you do in a day and what does your schedule look like? I kind of already walked through my schedule that we're planning on sticking to. Um, and as for hours of school per day, this should take us like three to four hours. And that's like mostly sitting down and doing work. And yeah, I feel like that's going to be tough on them. But we'll see how it goes. Um, before we were doing like two hours of sit down work. So this is like doubling this. So we'll just have to see how it goes. But yeah, it was like two hours of sit down work, breaks in between. And then we of course play board games and stuff like that, which all counts towards the school. Next question is how do you make slash keep report cards, permanent records, um, I guess like progress reports and stuff. I haven't actually had to do that since this is our first year technically homeschooling under the state. I haven't had to make a progress report. I didn't have to make a progress report for kindergarten or whatever. So we're gonna come to that at the end of the year when we get to it. Um, I'm trying to do research and figure out the best way to do that. I will probably use some sort of progress report template, but yeah. The last two questions both have to do with socialization and being social enough and getting enough kid interaction. And as I said, I'm only worried about this because of COVID, prior to COVID, like we had plenty of social interaction. There are plenty of ways to socialize your children and get out there and make new friends, not at school. School, public school is not for socializing. Like that's, it's like a myth. Like people always nag on homeschoolers for socializing their kids. But there are so many ways to homeschool, to socialize your kids while homeschooling, co-ops, like I said, extracurricular activities, you name it, homeschoolers can be a part of it. So that is it. If you have any more questions, let me know down below. As I said, I'm not an expert. I'm just, I'm just kind of winging it, doing the best I can. My kids are going to learn and we're all going to be happy and yeah. As I said, any questions, leave them for me down below. I'll try to answer them. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see y'all. I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.